Hey everyone, Scotty Norris here again, on to part 3 of our extensibility series for VRA 8. Now this one I wanted to cover, we've covered the intro, what extensibility is, we've covered calling ABX, we've covered calling VRO. Let's have a look at something that, you know, is very common that a lot of organisations want and that's been able to change the name. Now what I've got here is just a simple single machine blueprint um, that I've just called manual name. And on this particular blueprint, uh, and if you want to have a look at how, if you're just viewing in, how we um, create these blueprints, there's a whole series on Blueprinting 101, uh, which all this is explained in. But in this, this particular instance, we've got my input here, which is manual name. Now, I'll get into sort of more advanced, so I wouldn't recommend this in a, in a production environment, right? Because this is essentially giving people free text and name their own machines, which will just end in tears, right? Uh, and then we go, okay, I've got custom name equals true, so I want to use that for my subscription, right? And I'm only doing this, so custom naming might be actually something that's run on all your machines, but I'm just doing this so I, you know, I can go and create new blueprints and not have them, you know, you know break because they're subscribed to everything. Um, they don't have the right things, so this is more just for me and my test bed. We then have, I then have a manual name, custom property there. Now I also have name and I'm actually assigning the same value to both and there's a there's a bit of method to the madness there and I'll, and I'll get to that in a minute. So very very simple blueprint. Now if we go and have a look at our extensibility over here and I've got this change name action. Now this change name action is literally the, the template. So if we just uh, for those who know we go to new action we'll go uh, demo change name Let's pick a project next. So over here, when we go load template, we go rename VM. Load, there it is. Like it's identical, right? So I don't need to know this, but we'll discard that one. We'll go back to my change name one. Yeah, so I didn't even change it. I didn't even change the inputs here because I'm not actually using these inputs. Uh, so what we're doing here, what it's essentially doing is it's grabbing the resource name, so the input resource names, and because that's an array, that's grabbing the first one, because this will be running on every machine, there's only ever going to be one in there. Um, right, so we can go, right, got that, uh, and then we've got the old name. So I'm actually using manual name, and the reason I'm using manual name and not just name uh, is because the name value isn't available at that point in time. Um, when I need to actually run this change name script. And then we create the outputs, we assign the resource names output, and then we assign our new name to that zero. So essentially we're just taking in the inputs, doing a swap over of the name and putting that in the outputs. And because we're returning the outputs, that automatically gets set on the machine. So in here, I'm, I'm running it on-prem, uh, which is fine. This doesn't make a difference and that's it. Very, very simple uh, running Python, right? So let's have a look at the subscription. So on this particular subscription, I've got compute allocation. So when we when we have a look at this, uh, look at the, uh, the different uh, events. So if we actually go and have a look at event topics here, I'm already on it. Uh, you can see all the different event topics and these are one thing you can execute particular tasks. So if I do um, computer post provision, it actually won't change the name because it's happened too late in the machine cycle. It actually needs to happen at the um, pre-allocation stage, uh, which is, you know, makes sense. And obviously it won't, it won't do post provision. So, you know, that, that is where we want to be able to make this change. So the na name actually goes through and actually becomes the name of the machine. So we go, okay. Cool, we've got that. We'll look at our subscription. I'm doing that custom name equals true, just so I can, you know, within the lab play around. Um, I'm choosing that name. I've added a priority of, of 10 on there, and I've put it for any, any project. So what we're gonna do now is just kick this off, uh, deploy that, and we'll have a look. So deployment. Change name demo, we'll choose the latest draft, next. And server name, we'll call it VME0002. 
deploy. All right, so that's going to go off and deploy. Now, when let's just cover this while that's deploying. Let's probably cover how this would work in a normal enterprise environment. So if we went to design, generally what I do, and this is something I recommend, is there's usually a naming schema, right? It's usually based on that, maybe environment, maybe something else. So this is when we get down to blueprint design. We go, okay, well, we want to, you know, as part of the environment, maybe that makes, you know, uh, and this is where it can add into other things like the placement, your networks, your constraints. And if you want to understand what all they are, they're all in the, the Blueprinting 101 series uh, that I did. But maybe we want, you know, we want an input of environment, which is prod. Uh, maybe we have a, like a, a, an application and that gets shortened into a specific syntax for it. So, you know, maybe it's a, it's a web or it's a SQL or it's something else. Uh, and then you, you know, you then you might have uh, not just environment, but, but maybe it might be um, um, some sort of identifier, some sort of project identifier, or something else that might be another input. And now these would be configured all as drop downs, right? You wouldn't want people to free text these. Configure drop downs, and then you would have a service in VRO, or maybe it's a lambda function or something else, which would just keep adding to the number. So it keep you keep it. In a database, whether it's, whether it's a, a configure element in VRO or whether it's a Etsy a Etsy D database, a key value store database, or an actual full database, it doesn't matter. And every time it runs, it actually queries, takes the current number, adds one to it, and then rewrites it, and it uses that number. That way, you've got essentially, you know, app environment, you know, some sort of code, and then the number like zero 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 one two three four five and that is how and then you would have that particular extensibility um, script running here in the actions it would be a little bit more complex so it would actually take in you know you'd probably want you would have you know app plus environment plus code plus number right and that would be your that would be your generation of your automatic naming and that would happen across the board with no matter what machine was provisioned right so that's how most organizations and what i usually do for most organizations uh, is implement that that level now some actually have naming services that already exist and it's just about plugging into those if that's what you wanted to do so let's see if this is um deployment is happening So that should actually, if we go to and log into vSphere, because that's where it's going. Yep, there it is, VME002. And now let's ch now change the name of the machine. Uh, eventually DNS name will come up that'll be VME002 as well uh, at virtualize me and everything's hunky-dory so that's a nice very simple very quick video on look custom naming that's how you currently do it in VRA um, obviously as I said you wouldn't normally have manual input of the entire name um, but that's where you know the different the, the different things that would make up your deployment your app your project your environment etc etc would then derive that name for you anyway take care i'll see you next time uh, with a bit more uh, advanced uh, extensibility until then take care see you now bye